Discover the top 10 deadliest snipers in history as we take a closer look at their precision, skill, and the impact they had on the battlefield. From legendary figures to lesser-known sharpshooters, this list showcases the lethal accuracy and strategic prowess of these remarkable individuals. Join us as we delve into the stories of the most lethal snipers ever to have walked the earth. One shot, one kill. This is the motto that governs all snipers who, ironically, train their entire lives to fire as few bullets as possible. What makes snipers so fascinating and lethal at the same time? Is it their incredible nerves of steel, their impressive precision, or their tremendous ability to remain in the same position for hours or even days? Frankly, we could say all this and more. However, within the world of snipers, there are legends, men who surpass the standards and make us question whether these soldiers are truly human. If it's not already time, buckle up and get ready to meet the 10 deadliest snipers in history. Let's begin. Carlos Hathkick, an American sniper who served in the Vietnam War, has a record of 93 confirmed kills during his service in the United States Marine Corps. With the aid of his rifle, he elevated the discipline of precision shooting to an art form. This character is well known for his particular and challenging shots. One of the most famous was when he shot a Viet Cong sniper from a distance of 457 meters, approximately four football fields. Impressively, the shot went through the Vietnamese sniper's scope and cleanly passed through his eye, causing almost instant death. Another of his greatest feats was killing the Vietnamese sniper and torturer known as Apache in 1966. Consequently, a bounty of $30,000 was placed on his head. However, despite the significant sum of money, no Viet Cong soldier was able to capture him. In 1975, due to health problems, he had to retire. Once retired, the United States Marine Corps asked him to help create their sniper training program. Hathkick often stated that he survived by entering something he called the bubble, a mental state of total, complete, and absolute concentration. Sergeant Hathkick, known as White Feather, died on February 22, 1999, at his home in Virginia. Francis Pegamagabo is a soldier who is not often mentioned in the pages of history. However, his story deserves to be told, as this man was undoubtedly the deadliest sniper of World War I. Francis, a soldier from the Ojibwe people, one of the largest native tribes in America, second only to the Cherokee and Navajo, fought with the Canadian Army during World War I in Belgium and France in 1915. He participated in some of the largest battles, such as the Battle of Somme, the Battle of Paschendale, and the Second Battle of Ypres, where he survived the first chlorine gas attack in history. However, this left irreparable damage to his lungs. During his military career, Francis Pegamagabo achieved 378 confirmed kills. His determination on the battlefield was such that he received multiple decorations. After his military career, Francis used his great reputation to fight for the rights of Canadian natives in the Assembly of First Nations and in 1943 became the Supreme Chief of the Independent Native Government. Francis Pegamagabo died on August 5, 1952, of a heart attack caused by his multiple lung wounds, and despite this, his actions, strength, and bravery continue to inspire millions. Juba is a name that became known precisely through this medium, YouTube. This Iraqi resistance sniper managed to kill 143 American soldiers during the Iraq War, earning him the nickname, the Terror of Baghdad. His real name is unknown, Juba is just a nickname given to him. This sniper recorded his shots, clearly showing American soldiers collapsing. These videos were disseminated on the internet and on DVDs. Armed with a Soviet Dragon of Sniper rifle, Juba became a true nightmare for the American army and a legend for the Iraqi resistance. However, although not entirely confirmed, it is said that he was captured in 2006 and supposedly presented to the press missing part of his leg and with his eyes blindfolded. This is quite strange, as there is no record, image, or interview of it. Ukrainian sniper Lyudmila Pavlichenko is a legend of World War II. This woman is known for having killed 309 German soldiers, 36 of whom were snipers. From a young age, Lyudmila practiced shooting in sports associations and won multiple tournaments, so shooting was nothing new in her life. In 1941, Operation Barbarossa began, and Stalin still called on women to enlist. However, Lyudmila volunteered to fight against the German army. Recruiters decided to test her marksmanship, which she passed without problems. 
Her real challenge was in Sevastopol, where she fought to exhaustion, enduring freezing temperatures and eating insects for eight long months. It is said that it was in this place where she engaged in most of her battles with German snipers sent specifically to kill her. In June 1942, a mortar shot caused such severe injuries to her face that she had to be evacuated in a submarine, an unprecedented measure. After a hard recovery, the Soviet Union decided that Pavlichenko was a valuable icon for the nation and prohibited her from returning to the battlefields, awarding her the Gold Star of Heroine of the Soviet Union on July 16, 1942. Several authors point out that there are various inconsistencies in Lyudmila's story, but there is no doubt that she was an important element for the Soviet Army. In 2015, the film, Battle for Sevastopol, was released which is a very graphic reference to the life of Lyudmila Pavlichenko. Many characters stood out for their heroism, compassion, or lethality during World War II. This is the case of Vasily Zaitsev. According to records provided by the Soviet Union, this smiling soldier managed to kill more than 242 German soldiers, 11 of whom were snipers. At the age of 26, World War II broke out, and he had to fight against the German forces. His skill in precision shooting allowed him to achieve multiple kills in a short time, and when he had already confirmed 100 kills, he was awarded the Order of Lenin. Shortly after this, a peculiar story emerges, centered on the legendary duel between him and German sniper Erwin Koenig. The story goes that Koenig was called by his officers to do one thing. Eliminate Vasily Zaitsev, who was already giving nightmares to German soldiers. This event, full of drama, has no exact conclusion. Some say Koenig killed Vasily, while others say Vasily killed Koenig. However, there is also the theory that Erwin Koenig was an invention of Soviet propaganda trying to boost the morale of its army. Nevertheless, others assert that this event did happen. It is very difficult to verify, and to date, no one has the absolute truth. This epic duel gained fame after the release of the film, Enemy of the Gates, which graphically details the development and outcome of this combat. If you want to know more about this character's life, I recommend reading his book, Notes of a Sniper in Stalingrad. Outside the Hollywood spotlight, Chris Kyle was a member of the Navy SEALs, the elite of the United States Special Forces. His specialty, precision shooting. This man is officially categorized as the deadliest sniper in the history of the United States of America, with 160 confirmed kills. The Devil of Ramadi, as the Iraqi insurgents called him, was a soldier who knew how to do his job perfectly, which is why bounties of up to $20,000 were offered for his head during the war. Unlike other snipers who constantly talk about the mental aspect of shooting, Chris Kyle said, I don't have to worry or do anything special mentally. I look through the scope, shoot, and focus on the next target. One of his most impressive feats was killing an insurgent at the staggering distance of 2,100 yards. A little over 1.9 kilometers, when the insurgent was carrying a rocket launcher threatening an American convoy. After four military operations in Iraq, he retired on September 2, 2009, with two silver stars and five bronze stars for valor. After retiring, Chris Kyle decided to write an autobiography called, American Sniper, published in 2012 and later adapted into a film in 2014. However, his story had a tragic ending, as in 2013, he was killed by Eddie Ray Ruth, a war veteran suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder whom Chris Kyle was trying to help. In World War II, another prominent figure is Simo Heha, a Finnish sniper known as, the White Death. With 505 confirmed kills, he is the deadliest sniper in history. Simo Heha participated in the Winter War, 1939-1940, between Finland and the Soviet Union. Despite being a simple farmer, Heha became a nightmare for Soviet soldiers thanks to his incredible precision and ability to camouflage in the snow. Using a bolt-action M2830 rifle without a telescopic sight, Heha preferred open sights to avoid the sun's reflection that could give away his position. His endurance and patience were such that he could remain motionless for hours in extreme temperatures. In March 1940, he was severely wounded in the face by an explosive bullet but survived and recovered. Heha is remembered as a national hero in Finland and an example of tenacity and bravery in combat. All these individuals, despite different contexts and eras, shared an extraordinary skill and unwavering commitment to their mission. Their stories testify to the complexity and impact of the sniper's role in war, 
showcasing both their lethality and the precision and mental control required for their work. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. Remember, a people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.